What was I gonna do again? Answer? I don't know. Wait! I actually do know. I need to... Uh... It was a Lunar New Year thing. Five Renner, time remaining 20 days. Did I not already get that? I did. <gasps> Ooh. Now I do have enough purple stuff. Everything's ready. Uh, double check everything. Don't want to bother. Don't want to bother. Never mind all of it. <laughs> All right, vibrant areas aloft in spring breeze. I don't know what it is. It's just the the freaking Chinese New New Year lunar. I can't think. I can't talk. I can't think about talking, or I can't talk about thinking. So you know what? Let's just go to the quest. All right, I'll do the ten times wish that Patrick asked Zhang Yun. Probability increased. Every ten wishes granted to include at least one. Four star item character can only be obtained the specified wish during the specified time. Am I gonna get a character out of this? I feel like there's a 10% ch chance of failure. But you know what? Let's do it! Give me one. Give me one. No. 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 <gasps> No! <laughs> no! 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 And no! I got a constellation for Noel, and the rest is no. All right, you know what? Screw this. I gotta do the uh, take a walk around the way of And I can't hear anybody. I don't know why. Nice to see you again, Traveler and Paimon. I can't hear any voices. Do you hear any voices, Patrick? Or is that just me? Oh, we're not interrupting anyone. I can't anyone, hear. Are okay, we? here's the thing. I can hear. <laughs> not at all. I, I don't hear them the talking. An interview or anything. I, I, I was just like, asking Miss Kuching about purchasing know. a kite. <laughs> wow, we're after a great start. One eternity later. Charlotte, lens of verity, verity. What? A reporter of the Steambird, a renowned newspaper in Fontaine. Charlotte has an enthusiastic nature and a keen sense of the news. Traveling across the streets of Fontaine, she captures the truth of a multitude of matters with a trusty camera. With a K. Uh, storm trigger. Wait, what? She is willing to go beyond the norm, even the risk of her own safety. She is well aware that. The storms now triggered upon the revelation of the truth, but despite all this, neither the toilet job itself nor the ple pleasure- Why did I say pleasure? I don't know! Pressure of external denunciations and threat has ever faced Charlotte in the slight. A kite? Are you buying some regional specialties to bring back to Fontaine? Uh, why would- why would you ever assume that? Why would you assume that? Well, yes. And... And add whatever the hell else to make Paimon think that, Oh, I'm gonna do this, and... <laughs> it seems you haven't heard yet. The theme of this year's Lantern Rite is kites. Because the two words rhyme. Oh, so that's why Paimon has seen so many floating in the sky. Oh! Somehow the two things are connected! Liyue Harbor is always changing. So it is only fitting that Lantern Rite should change in turn. Uh, why not? The Qixing believes it would benefit Liyue to build on our own cultural foundation by embracing the technologies of other nations. After all, it is said that the stones of another mountain may serve to better polish one's own jade. Oh, God. <laughs> so, Ningguang organized a private meeting with Miss Charlotte to ask for her help in fostering cooperation with the right people. Who? In the end, we decided to combine Liyue's traditional art of kite making with Fontaine's mechanical vertical lifting device. Wow, Fontaine is relying on Liyue. In other words, Fontaine is outsourcing to China. No! Don't outsource to China! I have to stop outsourcing to China! Mechanical <laughs> lifting device? Sounds no. pretty impressive. I really wonder what your idea of impressive is. Like, I don't know, you find some things are messed up as impressive and some things are not. I don't know! 
Also, stop outsourcing to China! Uh, but don't kites just use the wind to fly? Why would <laughs> boring. you need to add something You're mechanical? Boring. Why would I need to add something mechanical? Because it's a kite flying season and some people want to be lazy as hell and it's China. What do you expect of China, Paimon? Well, you've actually just answered your own question, Paimon. Yeah, by asking the question, you, you somehow answer your question as though it was a rhetorical strategy. How high and far a kite can fly depends as much on the weather conditions as on the skill of the person holding the string. Uh, wait, what? But as soon as there's no wind... Wait, what does the weather have to do with, uh, like a sweet skill? Medaka out of water. Experience doesn't matter at that point. Okay. Exactly. Liyue is now a nation ruled by humans, after all. It's about time we had the power to make a kite fly, don't you think? Uh, when did atheism somehow produce kite flying? Plus, the easier we can make it to enjoy, the more people will want to participate. I am. Hype cry. Hyping cry? Uh, easier to enjoy, the more people will want to participate, more people want to fly for an object in sky as, as cultural tradition. That's not a bad idea! Right? I also thought it was a novel idea. Wait, what? Plus, it shouldn't cost much to do. Uh, when did it cost anything? With Miss Charlotte's help, everything has gone smoothly. Our new mechanical kites are already available to purchase from a stall in the harbor. We're having trouble keeping up with demand. Uh, you have a limited supply. What do you expect? We also gave quite a bit of thought to the price. We didn't want it to be too much more expensive than a traditional kite. We just want to somehow have a supply and demand output. Ooh! Turns out you two and Ningguang like playing with toys just as much as Paimon! Play, play, play toys. You know, fine. Who the hell? Uh, toys? What the hell am I They're doing? not exactly toys. You play with a kite. Is that what you play with, not a toy? You see, Miss Kuching, that does seem to be everyone's first reaction. Uh, do you see it like a professional thing and like the idea of toys is somehow connected to like a childhood thing? So you're like, I'm no child. What are you talking about? Hmm. Although kites are one of our most time-honored cultural relics, outside of their use in certain ceremonies, I suppose they're considered playthings more than anything now. Why? Because you took it seriously and now everybody else is not taking it seriously? But to me, there's so much more than that. Which are... Think for a second about how remarkable it is that a flimsy paper kite attached to a string has the capacity to touch the sky. It is this slight piece of paper that also carries the weight of Liyue's cultural traditions. <laughs> There's an old poem that goes, O kite born of paper, flying true and sound, a lone traveler wanders, just waiting to be found. And you, I was expecting, wait, waiting to be found, and then she doesn't say anything after that. Why? In the past, poets from Liyue used kites to symbolize a feeling of longing, or evoke the peacefulness of idyllic rural scenery. Uh, we're in the urban society, not the rural society, so... We're flying kites in the city, not the countryside. If the people of today can derive enjoyment from this activity, they will not only be more likely to better appreciate the tradition, but also to pass it down to the people of tomorrow. Because tradition and respect. That's the coaching <laughs> we know. Always thinking five steps ahead of anyone else. Wait, what? No. No. Well said, Miss Kuching. I've learned quite a bit myself. I feel like everything that is said... <laughs> you made an empty speech and everyone is somehow convinced. <laughs> as long as you're willing to listen, I'm happy to share. Oh, well, I'm willing to listen, but I, I don't, like, I'm not... More fun. Hmm, let me think. Oh, I suppose we should first talk about how kites are made. It's another one of our precious forms of traditional craftsmanship. It's, a, it's about tradition. My grandfather told me that back when he was a boy, Children learn the art of kite making step by step from their elders. First, you use the thin strips of bamboo to construct the frame. 
Then, you draw a design of your choice on a piece of paper, paste it onto the frame, and tie on the string. I thought it was just thin piece of paper floating up in the sky. Where did it? When? What? Ah! When did the bamboo part came in? And isn't bamboo like a little bit heavier than paper? So how does that get brought up? Oh, it's a kite thing. Who gives a crap? Then you look towards the sky and release the kite to soar among the clouds. Uh huh. Some people write down certain names or desires on their kites, cut the string, and let them fly free. Others may place particular thoughts or meaning into the design itself. Mm. Are certain designs associated with certain meanings? <laughs> I'm gonna jot all of this down. No, they're not. Why would you associate meaning to non-meaning? It's a piece of paper floating up in sky as sort of weird thousand-ish year long Chinese tradition. Hmm. Well, for example, kites in the shape of a butterfly typically symbolize freedom, happiness, or the desire to break free. Uh... Aww, they also symbolize other things. Are you not gonna talk about that? Fascinating. Oh what my else god! Can you tell me. You're like, I'm going to give. It's like catching. It's like I'm going to give you obvious states. She's like fascinating. The scissor-tailed swallow is the most classic design. It symbolizes good fortune and joyful tidings. Different colors also have small variations in meaning. Scissor tail. Are these commonly understood meanings and symbols in Liyue? Kind of like the language of flowers in Fontaine. Uh, I don't know about Fontaine. I don't know if we can use that comparison. I haven't gotten to Fontaine yet, so I don't know. This probably wouldn't apply to players like me who haven't even gotten to Fontaine yet, who's struggling with everything else first. But I don't know. Hmm, I believe so. Most have probably heard something about it from their elders at some point. Uh, well. If you're interested, Miss Charlotte, I have several books on the topic that I could lend you. They could be a useful reference. Is, what? That would be a huge help! Uh, did she like, I got it. If you're interested, I would like to sell you my novel. It's like, she pulled off, she plugged in the merch at the end. Great! Looks like I've got the outline for quite the article on my hands. Hope it goes well, and why did it zoom into Paimon for a second? Perfect! We're gonna take a look around! Okay. Then I'll show Miss Charlotte to my home for a little while. Okay. I almost forgot. The Ministry of Civil Affairs is hosting a kite flying contest on the night of Lantern Rite. Mm -hmm. If you're interested, you're more than welcome to bring a kite and participate. If you're interested, do it, because why else would you talk to me in the first place? The rules are simple. Whoever flies their kite the highest and furthest within the time limit will receive a special honor along with a secret prize. Secret prize. It's not a secret if you tell me it's a secret. I've already prepared more than enough empty film for the event. I can see the spectacle already. Okay. Oh, Paimon was on board the moment you said secret prize. No, I, I was there. Why? <laughs> then I'll look forward to seeing your performance. Okay, then I'll look forward to watching you fail and or succeed because my responses are limited to whatever you do. You bet! Walk away awkwardly without Wait, saying Trevor, goodbye. <laughs> take a peek to your right. Do you see those two people lurking over there? Is it just Paimon? Or were they staring at us the whole time we were talking to Kuching and Charlotte just now? Uh, mm, those they two seem people fishy. next to those umbrellas? Huh. Something's up. Paimon just has a bad feeling. Why would you have a bad feeling? It's a kite flying contest. Why? Why? Do you think they could be treasure hoarders? They always seem to be stirring up trouble during Lantern Rite. What would the treasure hoarders ever want with this? Oh, I'm on sick of waiting around for something bad to happen. We should strike first, you know. Foil their plans before they even begin. What? It, it, I'm just thinking of like a preemptive strike. We should strike first before they ever do it. You go right, Paimon will go left. Wait, Paimon. The Orioles bask in spring and the heaven. Oh, damn it, you will. Oh my god. And my camera froze. Damn it. A few moments later. Uh, talk to the suspicious person. Oh. Oh. 
Look around, behind. It is with such an air of urgency that you appear before us. Your comportment suggests you believe us to have committed some heinous crime. Perhaps you could enlighten us as to your intentions. We just walked over here and you assume the worst. Whoa, where did this buddy daddy come from? You're one to talk. You should be the one doing the enlightening, buddy. Don't think we didn't notice you eavesdropping. One look and we can tell you were up to no good. Tell us everything, starting with your name. Oh my god. Paimon's voice sounds like... Oh god, I probably even... Nah, I'm not gonna say it. It's just a cartoon character of another series. I'll probably have to explain later. One bears no secrets before two such as yourselves. You stand in the presence of the mighty and illuminated Adeptus, Moon Carver. You're Moon Carver? You're the human version of the Moon Carver? For the purpose of this foray into the mortal realm, however, you may address one as Hojong. I have assumed a human form. You may call me by human form. You kidding? That deer's got his head stuck so far up in the clouds. There's no way he'd humble himself down here with the rest of us. Well, he kind of did. So there's no reason for you to, to doubt him in the first place. Also, doggy in the top right. Uh, <clears throat> you may want to hold your tongue. You may want to shut up for one second. <laughs> Don't think that Paimon is going to believe you just because you know her name. Let Paimon guess. You're supposed to be Mountain Shaper, right? Um... Indeed. Mooncarver and myself have descended upon the mortal realm for a visit. The two of you may call me Geo. You. I'm going to forget those names. I'm going to... I... I'm going to forget those names. I'm not going to bother remembering. Ah. Looks like you did your research. But in our experience, the harder you try to lead us on, the more likely it is that we've got a big fish on our hands. Okay, first of all, like even if you are suspicious of Mountain Shaper and Moon Carver, so what? We'll go straight to the Mullahless and have you arrested for impersonating a deaf guy. Um, first of all, like even if they were, so what? Preposterous, utterly preposterous. Uh, if you really are who you claim to be? Right! Tell us something that only an Adeptus would know. And it better not be some common knowledge that any person on the street could tell you. Fine. <sighs> you may recall that in order to preserve the tranquility of one's mountain, one planted karst crawlers around Mount Hulao. In fact, the seeds are one of Streetwood Rambler's cultivars. Among all the Adepti, her horticultural skill is preeminent. The plant neither wilts nor withers, and its practical use is undeniable. Yet it does require quite the upkeep. After a while, one tires of the effort. Uh-huh. Also, one speaks in third person. Thus, one had no choice but to foray into town to inquire from Streetwood Rambler a gentler and more easily managed variety. Uh, one has no choice but to resort to going to a cheap place in China. In other words, you outsourced to China again. On your way, you were accosted by a group of youths, and without revealing your true form, were unable to extricate yourself of their presence. If one's memory serves, Streetward Rambler had to personally come to your rescue. Yeah, in other words, you don't know how to use the first person I pronoun yet. Uh. How did you come into possession of such uh, knowledge? FYI, Streetwear Rambler is Madame Payne, who's the old lady who gave me the teapot. Oh, okay. Possession of some knowledge. How did you know? The young lass, Yao Yao, keeps no secrets from Cloud Retainer. Cloud Retainer? Ah, alas, one can only let bygones be bygones. Alas, I can't hold the grudge, so I might as well go Shoka Knight on everything. I suppose they really are the end of day. Ah. Uh. That might have been more detail than we needed. Seems like you two are the real deal, and I'm on sorry for suspecting you. Yeah, maybe, uh, don't get too ahead of yourself. But, uh, for beings as Take it as a compliment of quality to disguise. You indeed have an agile mind. Wait, what? Cloud Retainer was not mistaken in her high estimation of you. I'm still curious about something. It's just, why? I don't can understand why Mountain Shaper is here, but... Why did you decide to come to the city, Mooncarver? 
It's not really your thing, is it? Because people got tired of becoming animal god adepti, and so they want to descend to human planet and become human. Because some people want to be with everybody else. Hmm. <sighs> it is but an inevitable eventuality. Long have the mountains remained strangely idle since cloud retainers moved to Liu at Harbor. With Lantern Rite near at hand, one would expect Cloud Retainer to provide us with an account of the festivities in advance. Yet to this day, she has failed to appear. Cloud Retainer is hardly the forgetful sort. One must never rest idle in the face of that which demands action. And since our acquaintances dwell in Liyue Harbor, we had to travel here in human form to avail ourselves of their aid. Cloud Retainers in this case. So in other words, you just couldn't stay the hell away from everybody. You had to get involved again. And even after the whole Vassile or Gersh uh, of the Deep or of the Vortex, you're like, the Adepti will not get involved anymore. And now it's like, the Adept Adepti will get involved again. But a moment ago, one heard you speak of a mechanical kite of sorts. It appears the essence of the situation has hitherto revealed itself. Now, it is time for one to retire back to one's abode. Uh... I don't know, are the kites somehow an omen? You're like, we must move. Danger is afoot. Or is there something else I'm not getting? Huh. So, you're not looking for Cloud Retainer anymore? Why would you care? Perhaps there are aspects of Cloud Retainer's temperament that remain opaque to young Paimon. <laughs> Perhaps you're stupid! Cloud Retainer is of a proud and arrogant disposition. She holds the belief that her skill in mechanics surpasses that of all others. One can be quite certain it is hardly with an open mind that she regards the arrival of this new technology. Oh, okay. So the idea of, like, kites are somehow their own technology, and just hearing kites somehow reminds me of... Cloud Retainer, who's somehow also associated technology? I guess it's just some weird indirect association going on. One surmises that she has shut herself away, refused all company, and buried herself in the study of her own creations. Hmm. To call on her would only invite her rebuke. So she's a shut in. However, if you do happen to cross paths with her over the next few days, do pass along one's regards. In other words, tell them I s tell her I said hi. Sure, leave it to us. Okay. Have a safe trip back. Enjoy the scenery and happy lantern ride. Thank you for your kind oh, words. We shall now depart. We shall leave. Obvious statement is obvious. We are leaving now. Goodbye. <sighs> we got all worked up for nothing. All that trouble and it turned out to be people we knew all along. Why are we expecting newer people? Well, it's still pretty early. Let's head over and check out the kite stuff. My mom wants to see what kinds of kites we can buy to use in the competition. The bigger and prettier, the better. Mm-hmm. You. Give me. Please. Uh, Thank you. Welcome. Are the two of you looking to buy a kite? Would you like me to go over the... Ooh, yes. Uh, this jade chamber design is our newest. It's been selling like crazy over the past two days. Are we going to have to choose between the swallow or the chamber? Does it also have a unique meaning? Of course. The Jade Chamber symbolizes wealth and abundance. The kite bearing its design is said to bring riches in the future to those. Oh, now that's Paimon's kind of kite! I apologize for the interruption, but are all your wares in order, Miss Genuine? Oh, yes, yes, they're just over there. The paper, bamboo, and dyes. Wonderful! I'll pack them up and get a guard to deliver the goods to Yilong Wharf for you. Yilong Wharf? Yilong Wharf? Oh, wonder what that place is like during Lantern Ride. Paimon would love to go take a look. Fine. So much for the well, kite stall. If the two of you are interested in going to Yilong Wharf, then could I trouble you to find Gaming and deliver these goods together? Gaming, not gaming. What? Is Gaming the guard you just mentioned? Uh, kind of name is Gaming. It, it, it's, it's a weird verb-like word that has somehow been turned into a noun as a use for a name. Just like child. Yes. The communications office handles shipments and transports around Liyue. He works for the Secure Transport Agency, one of our sub-organizations. 
Uh, the problem is, many of my colleagues have taken leave during Lantern Rite to spend time with their families. Uh -huh. So, our available workforce has seen a dramatic decrease recently. Wow, you're not the only one. So, in other words, we are a bit short-staffed and we might need some help. Wink, wink. If you were willing to help out, <laughs> I'd get a head start on my next appointment. I, I would be so surprised if you pulled the one any. Well, I guess we don't need any help. And he walks away, and that's the end of the quest. You do seem really pressed for time. He's short shaft. What do you expect? What help? Oh, wonderful. Uh, you will, of course, be compensated for your efforts. Okay. Now, at this time of day, coming should be somewhere in the vicinity. But just follow the main road until you see the head of a Wusho dance costume. We should be on your right. Be sure to come back We're if you'd like to buy a kite. Can't miss it. I'll even give you a discount. Okay. Wait, I thought we had an agreement. A loser buys dim sum tomorrow? <laughs> Look at you. Scowl like that for much longer and your face might stay that way. Uh, what? Hey now, don't be upset. How about this? You extend the invitation and I'll pay. How about this? I make myself mysterious and have the camera show below my nose to make it sound look more mysterious. Uh, no way, Gami. You're always the one picking up the tab. Uh, wait, wait. I'm not trying to be a sore loser. I just didn't expect you to come from behind a win like that. I'm not saying you won. I'm just saying I somehow suck, but I don't want to admit it. <laughs> that was nothing. All in a day's work, friend. God, his pupils look like a like a loading screen. It's weird. Like almost everybody in Genshin Impact has different types of pupils, but yeah, it's, it's weird. It looks like a volume button. I don't know. It's memor mesmerizing. Perfect. God, Ming is here. Yes, he is. Obvious. Same as obvious. I'm sorry to interrupt, Gaming. We just spoke to a guy from the communications office who needs you to deliver some goods to you and work. Oh, it must have been Longjo. Looks like I've got work. You gotta go. Looks like I gotta do things. Sure, go do your thing. Uh, let's have a rematch when you get back. I won't let you win so easily next time. I also won't ad admit I somehow sucked and do the same thing again. Wave at the same time. <laughs> Alrighty, you can hand the goods over to me. Must have been heavy calling them all this way. Let me take them off your hands. What? It wasn't that bad. It's just some kite making materials. Plus, we didn't have to walk very far. Wait, were we carrying this the whole time? Kite making materials. I see. I see. I see. Should I adjust the volume on his eyes? I'm glad it wasn't too much trouble, Paimon. Still, I owe you one. Ah, and you must be the traveler. It's nice to meet you. Think huh? Uh, you nice know to us? meet you. I didn't introduce myself. <laughs> There probably aren't many in Liyue who don't. I've heard yeah. quite a bit about you two. You're quite well known around these parts. God, I feel like he's an android every time I look at his eyes. Oh, and please excuse Longjo if he forgot to thank you. Uh, take my thanks in his place. Please excuse other person. I always subjugate other person. He's a good guy. He's just been super busy lately. Running around from place to place. All right. So, you here for Lantern, right? Yes. Yep, it's always so lively this time of year. We were actually hoping we could tag along to Elon Wharf and have a look around! Uh-huh. Perfect! We'll go together then! I'm good with directions, so just follow me. Trust me, I know my way around. We can exchange stories, tell jokes, or just chat along the way. Let's walk! And talk! And I'll blow the house down! Oh, and there are a couple of good places to eat along our route. We can stop and grab a bite when it's time. Seems like we're doing more than walking and talking at this point. The ingredients are fresh, the portions are generous, and the prices won't break the bank. And the steaks are I so juicy. Order anything? Paimon seems to be drooling already. Hey, did you really have to call Paimon out like that in front of our new friend? Considering that is the only option I have at the moment where there's no other nicer way to say it, then yes, you are referencing the three little piggies. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, I understand. Why are you I joke around like that with my friends. I don't know, it just, it just shows how close you are. Do <laughs> you need to pack anything up before we hit the road? I can wait. Uh, are we going to fight a boss or something? Nope, I think they're always packed and ready. 
<laughs> pretty much travel experts at this point. We're pretty much th we got things. I have food. We don't need to pack up anything. Oh, that's right. And also, why so would he ever ask if we need to pack anything? If you run anything? into any trouble, you can count on me to protect you. I am a guard, after all. A uh, guard of what? Yourself? No, that doesn't count. Also, first I heard. Uh, I took Oh, God. What? Yeah. 